All right, this week we saw Venom. Elliot, should we watch Venom? No. Thanks for listening to our podcast. Uh, this, is a, this is a bad film. Yeah, it was, well, a, it was real bad. Well, welcome to uh, Deep Dive Review. Today we're reviewing Venom. Venom. We usually do podcasts, but this week, no. This a review. Yeah. For your ears only. I'm, I'm Elliot, and this is Mira, just in case you decided to only listen to reviews and not the podcast. You're missing out a big time. Yeah. But speaking of missing out... <laughs> <laughs> You're not missing out if you don't watch this one. Let's talk about some, some things, Elliot. Characters. Well, there was Eddie Brock and Venom. Plus, sometimes they're the same thing, sometimes they're not. It's a little unclear on where one ends and the other begins. Eddie but Brock, then also, sometimes, it's very obvious. Eddie Brock used to be this cool reporter dude, and now he's, he's, a, bit, of a, he's a bit of a loser. Um, as we're constantly reminded. As we're constantly told every <laughs> because, five minutes. And also because, for some reason, he's got a plant that dies. Yeah. <laughs> his, pla- his whole life, and he loses his job, he loses his fiancée, and then his plant dies, and you're like, oh, that's where I draw the line. <laughs> this is the final. You kicked him when he was down by killing his plant. And um, and, and Venom is a is an alien alien slime, and he's a bit snarky. He's, he's, a, bit, he's a bit sassy sometimes, he isn't is he? He is a little sassy, yeah. Uh, well, Venom or uh, Dark Flubber, as I <laughs> as I like to call him. Yeah, of course. Uh, really was very changeable throughout this movie. Like sometimes he was a monster, and sometimes he was like the jovial, wisecracking uh, yeah. Venom, and it was kind of it was it a, a little bit muddled from one to the other a lot. I felt like a lot was cut out of this film. Oh, definitely, and it's ridiculous because it was a very long film. It was. It was two and a half hours. Uh, Tom Hardy said that his favorite forty minutes of the film were cut out. And they only spent three weeks recording it. So, and it looks like this. Uh, they just took the first take for every single scene they did. Because... It sure does. Well, I would figure that they filmed the whole thing in three weeks because the entire third act is just CGI nonsense. Oh, so, so they didn't have to record anything. <laughs> they didn't have to, have to record third. anything. Uh, so there are characters, our main two characters. And then we've got Riz Ahmed as Carlton Drake, who was suitably expository for a villain. Yeah, I and. Mean, he was... uh, Michelle Williams, who looked like she was there for a paycheck, yeah, as as Eddie Brock's ex fiance. But wait, who, you're forgetting about Dan, the best character. Oh yeah, Dan was all right, wasn't he? Yeah, I thought actually it was like, I when when Dan was introduced, I really anticipated them being like, look at this lame new boyfriend and he's nowhere near as cool, cool as you know he doesn't have a motorbike or anything but and, and i actually kind of like yeah he was, a, he was a nice guy he was a nice guy so he was pretty cool in terms of subverting expectations you managed one <laughs> in a whole film yeah for there, real. there are characters uh there's there's a surprisingly small amount of characters really there's mrs chen who who works in a vietnamese grocery store yeah um she doesn't really count as a character, no. <laughs> though, does she? She was just there. No, that's kind of that's about it. There's Doctor Skirt. 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 Isn't it Skirt? I thought it was Skirt because oh, yeah. I was like, huh, that's an animal of clothing. Anyway, let's talk about some action because you know how often are you told just go into this film and switch your brain off and the action <laughs> is really good. So was the action really good? It was okay. Yeah, it was all right at times. There, there were some things where I was like, because I was saying um, in our last, hey, hey, if you not listen to the last, last episode of our podcast we were saying i was saying i was thinking there'll be a couple cool things that they do with the suit and then the rest of it will be ah eh. and surprise surprise there's a couple of cool things they did with the suit and the rest of it was ah eh. there was a bit where he he's riding on a motorbike and he turns the corner really fast and he skids mm. but the venom kind of becomes a blanket underneath him to protect him and then like a couple tendrils catch onto a lamp post so he swings around so there's a couple things like that were which were cool and then there's like a big fight scene where they use smoke grenades or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I've got that in my notes here, actually. There was a whole fight where there's, like, a SWAT team trying to take him down, and they throw, like, a million stun and smoke grenades at him. Yeah. So, and then they just can't see, so they're shooting blindly and not being able to hit him. And it's, it makes it's just, no sense. And even if they could hit him, they've already established that the bullets just bounce off or he absorbs them or something. Yeah, so a couple what was times, the point? A couple of times he was hit by a bomb, and he's like, ah, it got me. But then... Someone was just like point blank rage shooting him with a machine gun, and he's like, "That's okay." It's <laughs> this time, it's all right. Yeah. Uh, so who knows how that worked? Yeah, but and in the they use like um, they use like a what you call it, 
not infrared to do like heat heat signatures but for some yeah. reason in the heat like you could still see his like eyes and stuff well, it's, which you don't norm don't normally with heat signature it was just a bit weird now i have this in my notes as well something that Ooh. i feel like they majorly missed a cool opportunity for during that was when they're looking through like the infrared uh you know he it wasn't even heat signatures i don't think it was maybe like movement or whatever yeah. it was everything was inverted they could have had the sickest anti-venom like reference oh, in, they in that, have, yes. but instead it's like no, everyone's inverted apart from him. He's yeah, fine. For some reason, he wasn't. It, it, <laughs> it just looked like they had the footage that was inverted. Maybe they didn't they want just... like fans to think that anti-venom had turned up, but that would have been such a like a cool momentary yeah, reference. I love I love anti-venom so much, and that would have been a real nice little reference. But instead, nah, nah. Uh, another Forget question: about it. When he first absorbs uh, the the symbiote symbiote sim, symbiote sim, venom when, when he first they ch- i feel like they changed from like scene to scene how they said that word yeah i think just like us they're not quite sure how it's said no i i'd be pretty confident but then as soon as i hear myself say it out loud i'm oh like no God. i don't know i say symbiote i think i say symbiote oh very different yeah well well we're coming to blows guys <laughs> Um, so when he first absorbed Venom, yeah, why did he know to try things like flips and kicking off walls and, uh, like running through walls and like, how did he just, I don't know. Cause there's a bit where he's running down a corridor and he's, oh, it's like literally only just got inside of him like seconds ago, seconds ago. And the guy's also running towards him and he jumps both feet onto the wall yeah, and then kicks with enough power to like break that wall and punches the guy like horizontally yeah but it's not like a tendril came out and did that he uh, himself he, he, yeah, did that yeah there was there was the suit wasn't on him it was just no. in him at some at that stage yeah so, so why did he do that I, 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 hey i'll tell you what when he was filming his tv show the brock report <laughs> you mean the walk report the, the walk report uh, which which had a cool intro, which oh. showed him just saying all headlines at once. Yeah, uh, he probably had to find a whole bunch of people, and that was his that was his signature so move. He's actually, you know, not only does he drive a motorbike, but he's a badass like street fighter. Yeah, well. of course, yeah. and he's got a leather jacket. Whoa! Why? Speaking of the walk report, why does he speak like that? I don't know. <laughs> because obviously Tom Hardy is an English gentleman. Yeah. Uh, and and he does, you know, his is kind of regular English voice, and then he's got, like, his movie voice. Yeah. But then he tries weird accents in every role, and this one, he tried sounding like that, that, um... You know the, the That's All Folks from Looney Tunes? Yeah. I kept That's being, All Folks? Yeah. Hey, it's me, Eddie Bwok, I'm a boy. <laughs> like, why does he sound like that? What was, was the name of their cat? It was, like, Mr. Frankenstein. He was like, help me to Frankenstein. Hey, how's he doing? Uh, speaking of that cat, that cat was definitely supposed to get one of the symbiotes in it at some stage, right? Yeah. Because it didn't serve any other purpose. No. I feel like that was cut. It was a metaphor for the life he used to have, and it was, it was just out of reach. I oh. Yeah. All right, David Bordwell over here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, speak about the dialogue a little bit. I just wanted to immediately draw attention to my favorite line of dialogue from the film, where Tom Hardy reminds uh, the corpse of Michelle Williams to to bring a, a motorbike helmet to with her when he picks her up from work. Yeah. They're going on a date, and then he says, "I hope you remembered you remember your motorbike helmet." And she says, "Yes, I will wear it to our wedding." And then he says, "That's hot." <laughs> and it's. That's how they say it as well. There's no... There's zero chemistry between them. No, it's awful. But also, like, we already established, like, three separate times that they were engaged. Like, the first shot of either of them is a close-up on her wedding ring. Yeah. Or her her engagement ring. Like, why... I don't... I really don't understand. And also, Eddie doesn't seem like the type of dude who'd wear a helmet anyway. So it just later like, on he does. No, he that's, does, that's I, the only time he ever wears the helmet. He really doesn't feel like very fitting with his character. No, but it, it's even like it's not even like he was just being chased because at the in the after credit scene we see him on his motorbike, no helmet. No. So it's not it's not the thing he does. Uh, um, he's no regards for the rules of the road and and you know personal safety. No, and that's why you shouldn't see this film. Yeah, <laughs> it's the, a, it's a bad message for kids. At the um at the at the start of it, like three lines in a row people say have a nice life i've got yeah have a nice life is said 
th three times separately by different people. Uh, and it's kind of just like, I don't know, maybe that's something that one of the screenwriters says, so just he ends every conversation with have a nice life yeah. and he didn't realize that he put it in the script three times <laughs> because because the the villain who who runs the life foundation he he's he's te he's kind of telling maybe Eddie brock to go away and he says hasn't have a nice life maybe that's like the slogan of the life foundation yeah have a nice life yeah and th that kind of makes sense but then then um eddie because he's been messing with this with this drake guy he loses his job and yeah. they're like have a nice life. Yeah, his boss says that to yeah, him. As well. But his, bo his boss was like a friend who gave him a job in a time of need and stuff. So yeah. I understand firing him, but why is he now like, we'll never speak again? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Have a nice life. And then does does his fiance say that? I, no, I don't recall. But he says it to Riot when he blows yeah. him up on a spaceship. But but just it's, it's just so funny that so close... I guess maybe they were trying to say that because he said that, that the reason that he was fired was by his friend was because Drake, you know, used his influence. Yeah. But because they were so soon after each other, it just sounded like they forgot that they'd already used the line. I, it, it was, was really quite bizarre it wasn't even really supposed to be funny i don't think like no. there was no intention there no there's um speaking about bad lines when when eddie brock is um he's doing this interview with drake and um the, the musician drake uh, yeah and um ask him what that whole deal with millie bobby brown's about <laughs> yikes um, but he, he's, he's saying like, oh, what do you think about these allegations? And then he goes, more like the Death Foundation. <laughs> Does he, wait, did he actually say that? Yeah, when, he's being, <laughs> when he's being bullied away by the security guards, he goes, more like the Death Foundation, oh, am I right? No. Oh, no, I can see that being typed. That's the kind of thing I'd write, then giggle, and then like backspace. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, wrote no. that for yourself, and I then think, probably deleted it. I think I was already giggling at some of the bad dialogue in that scene, so I didn't even hear that, because yeah. that doesn't ring a bell whatsoever. That's yeah. well, the the entire life foundation. None of the characters in there need exist other than to explain the science that's going on. Yeah, there's really the only one who's got any relevance outside of let me explain you the thing is Skirth, who's like come in and let me explain you the thing. <laughs> uh, and so I don't know. Yeah, that felt like some weird scenes might have been cut there as well. Yeah, for sure. Um. Speaking of Carlton Drake, at one stage he has in a large number of children who seem unsupervised. Yeah. Uh, he's giving them a tour of his foundation and he says, some girl puts her hand up to ask a question. She's like, Mr. Drake? And then every, everyone shushes the kid and is like, shut up for in, no reason. In unison, this entire classroom was like, shh. And he's like, he's like, come here, kid. What's your name? No, he's like, don't silence her. Don't silence her. People who ask questions, we're the leaders of the world. All right, run along, and then doesn't answer a <laughs> <No>. question. <laughs> so, so she learned to continue answering questions, but not to get responses. Maybe, yeah. uh, was... maybe if they'd done that before, and then it's like, see, he doesn't like answering questions. Then they could have had some more tension in the scene where Eddie Brock interviews him or something. But, but... that's just not how they chose no. for things to go it was it felt quite cobbled together apparently right they got these symbiotes from a meteor with millions on yeah why did they pick just four to bring back with them and why would they have riot who's apparently like a leader of the symbiotes even though like in the comics it's very established that there's no kind of hierarchy it's just a bit chaotic like um, amongst them so they only could have one carry-on case with them and there was only four as there was only four astronauts so what happened was they really just you know they asked hey can i take this one on it's only like a small symbiote but they were like sorry it's in terms of conditions you know it's, if it doesn't fit in this small <laughs> small frame then you can't bring it on the plane and if you can you have to put it underneath your feet or in the overhead lock and they just didn't want to do that yeah well, that's fair enough yeah uh, I just wanted to draw attention to the first time where you see any kind of black goo appear on Eddie Brock when yeah. he's looking in the mirror and it goes, <clears throat> and he screams like a girl. Oh, it's the most high pitched <laughs> scream. It's like ever proper, heard. proper, like, I've never heard a grown man make a noise like that before. <laughs> and not only that, but he, he screams and then he, like, throws himself backwards away from and the mirror. And knocks himself out. And knocks himself out. And then. 
you just kind of led to assume he's been there for hours just in the bathtub. But right, so the symbiote relies on Eddie Brock's body to survive. Yeah. So if he's going to knock himself out by hitting his head on the bathtub, surely the symbiote would have tried to protect him from damaging himself. Like, that could kill him if he hit his head in the wrong place. Yeah. Why would it not even just attempt to stop him hurting himself? I don't know. Hey, it was funny when he falls and hit his head. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my name's Eddie Block and I got a bobo on my head. Well, no, knowing this Venom, though, he's probably like, Haha, I don't really like Eddie, that was a funny joke. Speaking of the symbiosis, there's a large portion of the film where it's like, haha, he doesn't know what's going on, and they're they don't know how to work with each other, and he's going a bit crazy. Yeah. But why did it take so long for that symbiosis to work when, like Carlton Drake and a cat and Michelle Williams all got instant yeah. symbiosis? At the start of it, it's like, oh look at all these, look at you know the toll it's taking on his body. He's sweaty. He's sick. Um, he's not handling it at all. But then, but then, you know, it, it just latches onto like three different people and, and they're all fine. fine. Yeah. There's no negative I guess we can't spend too long with everyone, but they yeah. also wanted the funny scenes. <laughs> yeah, he becomes a dog for like two seconds. Yeah. Why? Yeah, no, I don't know. Well, see, that's what I mean. Like, the dog scene, was that maybe put there because they were like, oh, we've had to cut the part with the cat. Like, that's what it felt like to me. I feel like the cat was supposed to be <laughs> venomized at some stage. Maybe. Um, also, the Life Foundation had, like, three symbiotes. Four, right? Four. Wait, and, it lost one right at the beginning. Yeah, it lost yeah. one at the beginning, yeah, because it only could only carry four bags. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they lost Venom, and then... No, sorry, they lost Riot. Right, yeah. And then... So they have a blue one, a yellow one, and Venom, who's black. And they just let them die, really. They, yeah, I was. Because I thought that as well. Like, you've only got a few of these. One of them... No, two of them have now escaped. Like, you're yeah. being a little bit cavalier with them. They need hosts to survive, but if the host rejects them, then they need to go back into a tube or back into another host. But they, they, kill, they kill Dr. Skirt or Skirth by letting it... Kill her. Kill her, because they're like, well, I guess it just won't match with her. We know the f- as a fact. Didn't he also say, like, open the jar... While he was still in the room. He was still in there. So was it not like a 50-50 chance that it would go for him? I guess he was hoping that it would take a while for it to climb out. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Can you imagine just Skirth laughing at him as he just (laughs) gets, like, (laughs) he's writhing on the floor? But then it rejects her overnight and leaves her body and then dies because it's got no host. Good effort. And Maybe he's so confident in his plan, he's like, oh, we'll get millions more when we go back anyway. Yeah. But, But then, um... Like, no one was watching her, so it just dies. Yeah. And, like, you sent... Like, space travel is not cheap. No, you know, he spent so much getting these. Also, how did the one that landed in Malaysia, which was Riot... Yeah. Uh, f- first of all, how did it know to go to San Francisco? Did it look it up on the internet where the Life Foundation was? I guess. Did it buy a plane ticket? I presume that when a symbiote goes into someone's body, it gets some of their memories. Right. Because... Okay. But it it left, like, a quite capable-bodied-looking young woman for a really old woman then, and then for a child. That one had been compromised. <laughs> you know when she killed all those people for no reason whatsoever? It got compromised. Damn. Really didn't think it through. I am confused why they would have adapted the lethal weapon... No, not lethal weapon. What's it called? Lethal protector storyline. Yeah. <laughs> and not do, like, the splitting it into the five... Like, anguish and scream and all those. Like, I presume that that's what all the colored Power Ranger-looking goos were going to be. Yeah. But then they were just like, no, it was just Riot. Maybe that's what they cut out, because I was really looking forward to, like, a yellow one and a blue one. Well, isn't a... Skirth uh, Scream in the comics as yeah, well, I, I think? think. So. Yeah, so they just didn't make her one. No, oh, and they chose, like, the most boring... Like, Riot is the most boring-looking one. He's just gray, yeah. and he's got, like, a little bit of red on him. Yeah, but he really is quite dull. He's so bo- like a so, yellow one would have been so much cooler, and the, it would have made that fight so much more interesting. The black on gray fight at the end really just looked like someone got like a bunch of licorice or taffy or something and put it in a in a <laughs> tumble dryer. Machine. Yeah, it really was. It was just a tra- you couldn't see what was going goo. on at all. Yeah, <laughs> we were just looking through his notes, and there's just there's, pages. There's and a pages. lot of notes. I want to, what kind of journalist is Eddie Brock, right? Because he's got like what seems to be some kind of internet show. Yeah. It's not 
set up as to who he works for. It's just a news company. Yeah. And he's got his Eddie Boaco for it. Eddie Boaco for Which it. I remain adamant that it should be called Boaking News. <laughs> like like Breaking News, yeah. but for Brock. <laughs> Breaking News. Um, but we established that he's already been fired from the Daily Globe, which if you're a fan of Spider-Man, you know that that's like the other New York newspaper. So you've got the Daily Bugle, Bugle which is J. Jonah Jameson's one, which Peter Parker works for and Eddie Brock gets fired from. And then you've got the Daily Globe, which is the one that when anyone who works for the Bugle gets mad at, they're like, I'm going to go right for the Globe. Yeah. So he's been fired from that. Mm Mm-hmm. But we're not told why. He's like, there was a mistake. He, he was a loose cannon. <laughs> so then he moves to San Francisco to be with his, his fiance. Yeah. Then he breaks and enters to get a new story. He reports stuff with no sources. He snoops in his fiance's private files. And when he interviews Carlton Drake, he's like, the number of liver failures is like halved and no, then he's was, like actually it's it's cut by three times as it, much it, it was so the, he doesn't even have his facts no, right he's like the life expectancy of people with pancreatic cancer has doubled oh and yeah yeah Jake was like no it's triple yeah like he doesn't even have his facts right so he's just Bad. completely yeah not a good journalist with no, no journalistic integrity or, or like any you know any any regard for the rules of and journalism his boss is like you can't just not have sources and That's he's, not like, how he, he's, he's like, like i got a hunch he's like but but he's a bad guy <laughs> that way i can say whatever i want he, about him he says right at the beginning like the man you work for is an evil person <laughs> and you're like okay thanks for laying that out in such plain english for us bud yeah why did we spend so long with him as an unemployed bum as well like anyone can upload stuff to the internet why didn't he just continue making like you know, journalistic stories and in, in, investigating I, stuff. And then, like, he would have been picked up by someone else, He was else, right? clearly famous as well. Because yeah. Because her Dan the Man is like, hey, you're ready, Brock. I love uh, you, man. Yeah, all the people you've taken down. Yeah. So if, like, he lost his job, surely he could go to another news organization, like the, the Daily Bugle, yeah. and be like, look at all these people I've taken down and uh, fight corruption in this. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you what, though, the people behind us laughed at they, everything that was said. I, I feel like it might have been a first date, and they felt like they had to laugh just to, like, break up silence <laughs> and stuff, because it felt awkward, because we got in about, like, five, ten minutes before the film started, so there's just, you know, it's quiet, there's a blank screen, just people are talking. Yeah. And it was, like, very long silences between them. <laughs> They just weren't really talking. So anyway, here on Deep Dive Cinema, we're going to give this uh, a good or a bad review. So how do you think that first date went? That first date, I would give it on the... Um, what was the... The Pierce Brosnan The Pierce scale. Brosnan. I'd give it like a peer. Like, I don't think... Yeah. I don't think it went... They seem to... I don't think it's a good first date movie. No. All right, here's a question. Why did Venom bond with Michelle Williams, whose character's name... I, it's Anne, isn't it? Yeah. Why did it bond with her instantly and then she kissed it out of her back into eddie and then she was just completely on face like i feel like if that happened to me i'd need to be institutionalized like that'd be terrifying and i and she was just like haha that really was something <laughs> <laughs> yeah just, remember when an alien like took over my body and i killed and ate people funny yeah. jokes <laughs> good memories huh yeah and we're back. We uh, took a break to eat some pie and we watched the first episode of Doctor Who. Why don't you tune in to our podcast where we might talk about it? Maybe I don't really not. feel like talking about it on the podcast, to be honest. Well, hey, guess what? We're not going to talk... This oh, wait, is... no, okay, we'll, we'll say that we will to entice them. Oh, and then they'll listen to it and then they'll get right to the end. But I'll edit out that part where I said that I won't add it in, but I'll leave this part yeah. in. There's a bit where he first becomes, like, the Venom suit takes over him. And he's just kind of, like, jumping down the street. But, like, he ju- every time he jumps, he lands on a car. And I'm like, Venom, it's slowing you down and you're killing people for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> Please, just if you're going to run, just run on the sidewalk. That's what it's there for. I was so confused by the way that they were, like, both vying for control when just there's literally, as far as I can recall, there's never been an instance when they both didn't want to work in unison. And the reason that they want to work in unison is because... They're the perfect bond because of their mutual hatred of a character who doesn't <laughs> exist. Yeah. So that's why they don't work. Obviously, there was the whole thing in the film where it's like he really loves tater tots, which was kind of embarrassing in the like, this is so random sort of yeah. way. Um, but they also mentioned uh, 
tater tots and chocolate at one stage. And uh, I've recently, as I've talked about in every week's deep dive podcast, deep dive uh, cinema podcast, I've been reading through all of all of the original Amazing Spider-Man run, yeah. and I've got kind of late nineties now. Okay. And for whatever reason, they decided to really like like tone down Venom and make him much more PG. Okay. So. Eddie becomes much more of like a an anti-hero and yeah. you know he's like a much better guy than he was when he was eating heads off people. Yeah. Um and th- for whatever reason it's just decided that like eating chocolate is Eddie Brock can suppress venom. What? Yeah. <laughs> he's like this is the kryptonite of venom. <laughs> so they just feed him chocolate and he's like a, a cool guy and venom's like completely compliant then. What? So That's they so referenced weird. that Maybe in future, we'll see the completely <laughs> complacent, just chilled out Venom because they've referenced it now. Speaking of referencing and kryptonite, here's a segue that we're going to bring in every time. Um, at one point, his girlfriend turns around and says, wow, so you think his kryptonite is sound? Yeah. Yeah. Which is a very, it feels very like, I don't know, you know, like those early Marvel films like Blade or... Uh, you know, uh, like, yeah, first X Men film and stuff yeah. like it's very much like these guys probably don't know what it is that these characters do because comics aren't as popular as they used to yeah. be. So it's very like, hello, I'm Professor X and I can read minds and my weaknesses, blah blah blah. Yeah. And it, it felt very much like that where they have to really like lay it out on a on a like, plate for you. How many times did they say like sound is his weakness? Yeah, and also heat obviously is also a weakness of. Uh, a venom, but there's a stage where he just burns his hand on like a, pl- a tray of taser tots, and he's completely fine. Yeah, I was like, that would have caused venom to like leap Freak out death. or something, yeah. and it, that just didn't happen. He also jumps into like a rocket, an explosion. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's so. fine. How do you think he kept venom at the end? Then I think that just he had like a because fr- when he fell, there was still like tendrils of it coming at venom coming out of his sleeves. Um, oh really? So I think he just had like a little bit left of it, and then. So did it part? Do you think that there's part of Venom elsewhere, and it's going to become a different no, character? No, I, I think that was all burnt up, and he right. kind of had a little bit, and that kind of had to spend weeks regrowing before it was able to kind of I be see. Venom again. Yeah. Um, huh. That's what I think happened anyway. So in conclusion, uh, should you honest, see Venom? Should you see Venom? No. Well, if you want to have, if, want, if it's like... It was kind of a laugh. I, I didn't hate it. It's this time of the year where there's like just nothing in cinema. As yeah, well. that's true. So if you're going to go with like your friends to see a film, you know, they have some film to laugh at this. Works. No, go see the film with Lady Gaga in it. I, a Star is Born. I don't know anything about it, but uh, they're probably going to sing some songs and wear some cowboy hats. Isn't A Star is Born also the name of like a film about baby Jesus? I'm pretty no, sure that's the Bible. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course, I mixed them up. <laughs> anyway, we digress. So, on a scale of um, T to Tater Tots, oh, T to Tater Tots, I'm gonna give this film Tate. Um, yeah, well, t- yeah, Tate, Tate scene sounds pretty fair. Yeah, it's it's if it wasn't kind of unintentionally funny in parts, I think it'd be Tat. But yeah. Just the only, like, we had a good laugh in the cinema. Yeah, yeah, we did. So I'm going to go with Tate. Tate yeah. I think that's a fair review. Why is our system for how good things are so difficult? You've got to sound out all the letters in your head to work out what hey, percentage it is. Well, it's nothing if not original. You're, you're damn right. All right, well, tune into uh, this week's podcast for some more thoughts on that that we might think of over the coming week. And I'm sure before long there'll be, like, Easter egg videos and stuff, and I'll be like, hey, I totally recognize (laughs) that thing. (laughs) So maybe we'll talk about some of those. And uh, also, just another little segue, but not for A to B, from this, this review to our upcoming podcast, I've got... A Crap Character of the Week, which is a segment that we do weekly where we find an old comic book character and we talk about why they're bad and then how we'd make them decent and usable in a film setting. Yeah. Um, and I've actually got another symbiote that's not from Spider-Man okay. to use in this upcoming week, so I won't say any more about that. But uh, If you go and Google the list of all symbiotes ever... You might have a chance of finding it. And you tr- crawl through them, then get a life. 
I thought you were going to make some kind of spider crawling pun there, but no. No. Just get a life, you freaking losers. 